Well, hello everyone. Eugene with CW3 Drones. I wanted to walk through a series of sequences uh, with regard to uh, using a uh, feature under the machine planning that I hadn't used before with a program that I hadn't used before. So the feature I'm going to use is called the Oblique and the program that I'm using is Web ODM. So to begin with, you'll go into your Auto Evo um, Explorer app, click on the missions. Once you're at missions, you can scroll to the left. And if you scroll to the left, you should see uh, past the uh, waypoint rectangular and polygon to oblique and recording. So the mission that I flew is the oblique. If you click on the oblique, it'll bring you into an area and then you can just put together your project. So this is kind of what I did. I clicked on the primer and as you'll note with the oblique you get a number of different options and angles that you'll be working with. The first thing that you want to do after you've got your angles and whatnot is just come up here and change the mission to something else. Something that's going to be memorable. Once you've done that, if you come over to this button, you can get to all the particulars with regard to uh, what you want the drone to do. So in this case, I do want to fly at 197 feet uh, as an altitude. I found that for the 3D models, uh, about 200 feet is, is usually pretty good. So you can click that. Of course, you can change that height. The oblique altitude, I want it to be the same. And then the uh, relative altitude, I also want it not to change from zero. The uh, ground sampling distance is 1.01 .01 centimeters per pixel, and I think that's fine. As is the ground sampling uh, distance for the oblique. The speed that my drone is flying is, is uh, templated at 11 miles an hour. But what I want to do is slow it down a little bit. I think going slower gives you a little bit more uh, option. Uh, and because it's got a rolling shutter instead of a mechanical shutter, it gives the um, camera a little bit more time to uh, take a picture and hopefully cuts down on motion blur. So I'm going to cut it down to five miles per hour. And then when you get to the oblique uh, uh, captures, I'm going to reduce that also to five miles per hour, just to be consistent. And then next you have your overlaps. So your front overlap is at 80% and I think that's good. Your oblique overlap is at 80% and that's good as well. The side overlap is at 70% and I want to bring that back up to about 75%. So what that's going to do is you note here for the, uh, uh, on the screen, it, it tightens up the, um, 76, it tightens up or brings down that uh, ratio. If it's uh, the further out it is, the steeper the angle, the closer in it is, the uh, broader the angle, something like that. The oblique angle, I want that to also be about 75, so I'm going to change that to 75 as well. And you'll see that doesn't change any of the screens on there. And then if we can keep going, we're at the oblique angle, uh, the pitch angle, we're talking here about the camera angle for the oblique, it's at 60% or 60 degrees, and that seems to be about fine. After it's all done, I do want the drone to come home. The angle pitch uh, for the, uh, or the course angle is just zero degrees, and that's just straight out, and I find that to be useful. Again, continuing the mission is gonna be the last action. You can change your uh, weather just by clicking this and you have a choice between it's sunny and cloudy. Today it seems to be a pretty sunny day. And then finally, uh, for the exfil data, you can go with PIX4D or default. I'm going to leave it at PIX4D just because uh, it'll make it easier for me. Once I'm there, click on the X, I can save that, and then you'll note the information that's on the screen. One of the big things that uh, I think is kind of important to note is how many pictures this is going to take. So if you click on here, you can look up at the top right and it'll say, it'll let you know that 
This mission will take 19 minutes, 35 seconds to uh, complete. The square, uh, square footage that you're going to be flying is there, and approximately 172 pictures. If you want less pictures, you could fly a um, smaller grid. You could do some other things that will get you a small, um, less pictures. But this is an approximate number. So when I flew the mission I'm going to show you in just a moment, the uh, scale, or rather the estimate, was 120 pictures. And the actual uh, number was closer to 139. Uh, it's just a few more pictures, but that might be important, particularly when you're rendering the, uh, uh, the photos themselves into WebODM or Drone Deploy or Pix4D or PixReact or whatever it is, whatever it is you're using to um, convert your photos. So with that, I'm going to pop into uh, WebODM. As I shared before, this is the actual oblique mission that I flew. You'll note that the altitude was still 197 feet, the oblique altitude 197 feet, and then some other changes that I made. The time that it was taken to fly this mission was 12 minutes 38 seconds, and that was very accurate. That's from start to finish. And the thing that's not, or wasn't as accurate in this case, was the number of photos that were going to be exposed. It was uh, estimated 120. It turned out to be about 139, I think it was. The other thing is you can note here the different directions the camera is, that the drone is flying. Uh, and when it's flying in a particular direction, the camera may be facing in a different direction. And that's where you get the oblique angles from. This is just kind of a close-up of that. One of the other things you'll note in just a few moments is that here, there's nothing uh, apparent that the uh, drone is flying over. That's actually a construction site. It's a uh, site that's uh, several buildings that are being built. And so when I show you this in WebODM, you'll see what the difference looks like. So over in WebODM, once you've uh, downloaded the software and then uh, brought, it, brought in the application itself, you can then add a project. I'm going to uh, simulate that. I'll just say test. Put a description in here, whatever that might be. And then go to create the project. Once the project is um, created, whatever it might be, the next thing is going to be to select the images. So in this case, I know my images are all under construction because I've downloaded from my uh, from my drone. Um, and so I just simply highlight all of the photos that I wanted. And then open those into, um, uh, into the uh, uh, image itself. Now I'm going to go ahead and review this, but then I'll stop it because I've already run this uh, one time. Once you click review, it'll ask you if you want to start processing. You can make any other changes you want from here. Change your processing node if you want it to, or change the image size, or things of that nature. But if you hit processing, the first thing it's going to do is capture all the images. And it does it fairly rapidly. Now, I'm, uh, I've only got about 16 uh, gigs of RAM here. Um, so it's going to be a little bit slower. Once it captures all the images, then it starts resizing the images. And then after it's done resizing the images, it will start uh, processing uh, the images. Now, as you'll note, uh, I already have 139 photos here. These are the same 139 photos again, so I'm not going to reprocess this whole thing. I'm going to cancel this. Cancel. And I'm going to go ahead and delete that after it's done. Very good. There's not a need to have both of those there. And now we'll take a look at the construction project itself. So this is the final product. It took 49 minutes, 48 seconds to process all 139 photos. Once you click on to the plus, you can make some additional changes. You can download the assets themselves, as well as a, a complete download for all the assets, the specific things. You can also view it in a map 
and we'll do that in just a second, as well as the 3D model. You could reprocess that if you wanted to, um, either from a data sheet or adding in different things or um, additional information. I'm going to take a look at the map first. And so this is the map of the world. And if you'll note, this is what that looks like uh, with the, this is what the area looks like uh, now it's under construction. Let me go back to uh, this image. Now you'll note it's the same location. It's just that uh, on here you've got the, uh, th there is no image because this is an old version of the map. Whereas on the newer version of the map, you can come out of that. So you can go. Um, so what you'll note here is that there's actually buildings here, as opposed to what you saw on the previous slide, where there were no buildings. There are actually buildings here. And with uh, Web ODM, uh, you can take a look at a, a bunch of things. But one of the things I like to show you on this is the opacity. Now, in the previous slide, all you saw was just the ground. And if you click on the opacity slide, you can make those buildings disappear and go back down to the ground level of what it looked like uh, beforehand. You will also probably note that this image is even more recent than the uh, original image that I showed you uh, based on wherever that map image came from. Next thing I want to show you is what this looks like as a 3D map. So the 3D map itself has been, uh, you, you, the same information was used to create this 3D map. And it looks a little bit, uh, uh, sparkly. This is because you're seeing all of the uh, the uh, point uh, the uh, point clouds, uh, and you can bring those in, of course. And again, it's not very, um, I guess, attractive, but it is showing all the point clouds themselves. If you want it to be a little bit more smooth, simply come up to the textured model and then click on Show Model itself. It's just going to kind of smooth those things out for you and gave you a look at the area that was um, flown. So this is a pretty decent uh, 3D model. This particular model itself, I'm not, I didn't do any GCPs, and so there's not a, an accurate way of establishing um, distance, uh, but the model itself does a pretty good job of representing uh, the information specifically the uh, buildings that are being that are under construction uh, for uh, for those purposes you can do a few other things with regard to the model itself besides changing the appearance you can also add in things like a skybox add in the clouds or you could use the gradient scale which it was would use the background for black or white or none uh, whatever it is you'd like that would best represent uh, for you or for your client uh, the image itself. But otherwise, again, it's a, not a bad 3D model. And because I was shooting this using the oblique, you got much more uh, information that was put into it. Now, again, 197 feet, you're still using a, a sub one inch um, camera and that's a rolling shutter. So the the uh, crispness is probably not going to be the same that you would find with, say, a mechanical shutter. All right. Well, that's the uh, long and short of using Web ODM or how I've used Web ODM uh, in order to uh, bring a uh, an image to life uh, and to uh, show you some of the three D uh, image capabilities. Hope this was helpful. Thanks a lot. And I'll see you in the next video.